The second cup of coffee, Pastor Tom here with you. It's week two of our series, Hearing from God. Last week we walked through uh, John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And we and gave you four things out of that. If you're desiring to speak for God prophetically, there's four things that you really need to be operating in your life at a great, uh, at some degree, but you should always be growing in them. I'm not going to rehash that. You can go back and find it on whatever platform you're finding us today. A great thing to send to somebody who feels like maybe they are uh, prophetic or called to be a prophet or prophetess or, or whatever. Um, it's just a, it's a spiritual and practical. Um, today, I want to give you a bit of a warning. And what I mean by that is in um, your heart, based on last week will will determine your hearing sometimes and it may be confusing why do, what do I why do I say that <clears throat> if my heart isn't right with God or there's something in my heart that isn't right with God I can take what I heard him say and then misapply it how do I know that uh, you see it with Balaam in the Old Testament and I don't have the the uh, in numbers 22 you can read through that who is Balaam? Balaam was a prophet, got hired by another king to curse Israel. But Balaam told him from the beginning, I cannot curse. First of all, I got to find out if God will let me go. God says go. He said, but I can't do anything that God doesn't say to do. So every time he blessed them instead of cursed them. But in the midst of that, um, he's going on his donkey and the donkey keeps like not wanting to go and, and crushing his foot and he's beating the donkey. And finally the donkey starts to speak by the, the utterance of the Lord. I'm guessing and said, what? man, have I ever done this in all the years you've owned me? He's like, no. And he's like, do you think there might be a reason? And all of a sudden Balaam sees this angel standing there with a fiery sword that was going to kill Balaam for going, uh, when God said go, a little confusing, isn't it? Well, what you have to understand, it wasn't the word of God. It was the heart of Balaam that was in question. So when I desire to prophesy, I have to, as best I'm able, where is my heart in this? Uh, Apostle Dave, who was the founding pastor in the apostolic covering of this church, um, taught me, and he heard it from Jack Havard, was this, you got to suspect your own righteousness. So sometimes this is how it creeps in. You see a situation, you think you see it clearly, and you want to interject your opinion in force. And so you say it's a prophecy because you feel it's prophetic. It may not be. It may be your opinion because you feel very, very, very um, emphatic about the situation and how clearly you see it. But that may, in fact, not be how God sees it. And so did Balaam hear from God? Yeah, I think he did. But he had the wrong heart. And you may even get confused by that. Reading through there, you may be like, Pastor Tom, he never cursed them. No, he didn't. But when it got, you don't see this in Scripture. You, you, did, you see it um, in Scripture, sorry, but not have the fullness of the story in that section. Okay, You have to read the rest uh, through Scripture. And you hear Balaam talked about, it, and it's never in a good way. What he did was he didn't prophesy against Israel, but he went to the people who were their enemies, and he instructed them how to destroy the people of Israel by, by do these things, and you're going to make them fall, and you're going to make them stumble before God. God knew that ahead of time when he was asked whether or not he would bless or he would curse. So what God was doing was intervening to keep him from cursing the people. But he was also at the same time offering a bit of mercy and grace to Balaam to keep him from getting killed. Because what happened to Balaam eventually was the people of Israel killed Balaam when they attacked the people who had caused them to fall and stumble. So where does that leave us in this in hearing God? God, I'm going to be like David. Search me, O God, and know my heart. And this is the key. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the path everlasting. There's three places. God, is there anxiousness in me? Is that anxiousness causing me to prophesy something into a situation which is my solution for it rather than your will? God, would you test my heart? Is my heart right before you? Am I, am I, am I, not, am I walking in my own righteousness and not your righteousness? So test me. Is there anxiousness? And do I have an offense? 
do I have an offense towards this person? Do I have an offense towards this church? Do I have an offense in, in these situations? Because if those things are out of order, then even what God said, but what I hear him say in the application of that may be all out of whack because my heart's not right. So 1 Corinthians 14, desire spiritual gifts, but especially you may prophesy, but you got to have your heart right. And if you wonder about that, go before God, let him sort those things out. Um, and also read through Balaam and let God work some of that out in you. It's not that you may have not have heard him, but it may be that he says something in your heart that he wants to deal with before he releases you to do what he's asked you to do. Hopefully that helps. We love you. We're grateful that you're here. If it means something to you, share it and we'll talk to you soon.